Welcome to a new anime review series. This one I'm reviewing the series Pandora Hearts. Yes, a short-lived anime released in... Let's see if I look it up here. Yeah, I say short-lived because this series only lasted for 25 episodes. Which makes it one of the more shorter series I've actually watched. Yes. One episode longer than Magica 1412. Mm -hmm. The anime was released over the course of the year 2009. So yeah, this series aired 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and here's something really weird about the series. I like a lot, of, a lot of other series I've watched. This is the second series I've watched where there's no English dub for it. That's not a joke. There, There is no dub for the series at all. Unknown why... I mean, it was licensed to be released over here. I mean, the manga was released over here, but... I mean, it's, it was licensed by NES, NIS America for a video game. They released it over here, but... No dub. Nope, no dub. Now, I have not figured out exactly what the reasoning for this is. It's quite dumb for a series like this of its length. Do not be dubbed. I mean, look at Magic Out 1412. I would love to hear that dub, but no. Never dub. Probably because it's associated with Case Close, and of course, Funimation doesn't want to touch Case Close because of bullcrap reasons. Huh. But anyways, basically, Pandora Hearts was started by a female writer. Yes. A manga by a female writer named June Mazaki. Mm-hmm. The manga produced from 2006 to 2015. In case you're wondering how many chapters we that time, 104. Here's here's the actual reason why there, that there was that many amount of chapters released in nine years. It was a monthly manga, just like <laughs> Blue Exorcist, which is also a monthly manga as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second series in the raw review, and it's based upon monthly manga. Not not the first one I reviewed, no, but second one in a row because the last one I did was Magic Out 1412. Mm -hmm. Yes, this series is basically about well the whole thing with this one is that a character named Oz is take is basically coming is going to his coming of age ceremony. Yeah, basically become a legal adult at the age of 15 for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, from the way it look, it the way they show in the anime, it kind of looks like a knighting ceremony mixed with a confirmation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, over the course of these few episodes, they only they only introduce a few characters. This probably like the series has got a boatload of characters. Mm -hmm. Because it's a series, why not have boatload of characters? Like over the course of these few episodes, we can just see some people. The main character Oz. We also have his uncle Oscar, his adorable sister Ada, who actually does age, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something about the series I will talk about in a later video when I get a chance to talk about it. Mm -hmm. yep. We also see Gil, his best friend slash manservant. Basically, he's his valet. Mm -hmm. And we also get a chance to see the character Sharon. Her, I would say her bodyguard, Break. Yeah, his, that's really his name, Break. And we see a woman who is actually looks like she's a year younger. Now, there's also Sharon. Sharon is two years younger than than Oz. There's also another woman who appears in the series who is technically the main female character of the series. Her name is Alice. And she's supposedly, according to some people in the series, they explain this by her, as she's also this creature known as the, the bee rabbit. No, the bee does, that, that does not basically mean B-I-T-C-H. No, it is, that is not what it stands for. It stands for black or blood rabbit. Because she can transform into this thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now the series starts off with the main character Oz and his adorable little sister, 
Hiding from the housemaid. Yes, because it comes with a rich family, like a lot of series. Like, one of the few series I've watched where the main character is a rich guy, but they're not, like, a big jerk about it. Not flaying around his wealth just because he feels like it. Mm -hmm. The only series I've seen like this where the main character is rich and doesn't basically be a jerk about it is, of course, Black Butler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not many series basically like this. Like hiding from the maid, and of course they go out and play, and of course they run to Gilbert, who act, who is his, basically his servant, and apparently he's afraid of cats. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of cats. The maid spooks him. Like, oh yeah, Master Oz, yeah, because well, it because his works and calls him Young Master. A lot of characters call him Young Master. Of course, they call his uncle Oscar Master Oscar because he's the head of the household. And they do mention Oz's father, and he's actually not in these episodes at all. Now, from what I heard about him, he's not a very nice person. But he will be talking about it another time. So, they go to the chapel, which where the coming of age ceremonies take place. Nothing wrong with them visiting the place, look around, and see how the place looks. I mean, we're like, oh, that'd be here the first time. And that's where we get used to Oscar. Very nice guy. This goes on for a bit. And so I play around for a little while and then Then of course they hear something. And then part of the ground collapses. Underneath it basically is a like a set like you see Gilbert and Oz just basically fall underneath and basically kind of like the stairs and you see like this grave, this cross grave, and there is this pocket watch. Yes, a pocket watch. I used to have a pocket watch. The thing broke. I used it a few times. Yeah, those things are still... It's not exactly wild use anymore. I mean, do people tell time nowadays people have a wristwatch? Or... Some people, like, a little bit younger than me, like to use their phone to tell time. Pocket watches, basically, are this. They're basically these things that, that go in your pocket, in your... Well... A lot of time, either in pants pocket, a lot of time, or at least in her shirt pocket. Basically, they go in your pocket, either pants or if you're wearing a suit, they go inside your shirt pocket. That's basically where the pocket watch goes. And it's meant to be taken out, like you push a little button on top, and the thing opens up, and that's where the clock is. It's an analog clock. It's always been analog. Mm -hmm. What happened to mine? Basically, it broke. I had to throw it away. I never bought to use it. Because I didn't feel it was necessary for me to have pocket watch because, well, I have a wristwatch. It was nice to have one, but no reason for me to carry the thing around. Mm -hmm. And no, it now in the series here, it the, this pocket watch makes a musical noise, kind of like a music box. Mine didn't. It basically just made ticking noise, tick noises like an actual clock. Now sometimes I've seen pocket watches also used to hold pictures. Yes, I've seen it in fiction. Where pocket watches can hold pictures, and then basically in some documentaries I've seen well dramatic recreations of things like this, where inside the watch itself there's like a little picture of like a lot of time guys will usually carry like their picture of their girlfriend or their wife or their daughter or their, one of their children in their pocket watch. That's generally what pocket watch is supposed to, supposed to do. Also kind of acts like a locket. Now I have never had one. I technically have never had one of these things. These are usually like little heart things around your neck, like my neck chain here, and open up. That also hit hold the picture as well. It's kind of like keeping close to the chest in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this pocket watch is like tied around this thing. And Oz gets basically a dream sequence when he confronts, was supposed to be Alice, but later revealed that this is actually not Alice. Don't know who this person is. Where we see like these dolls and. And then Alice, this, this Alice, quote, quotation, says, I won't forgive you. And then she tries to strangle him. Yes, strangle him. First time seeing that in the series, a strangulation. Or an attempt at strangulation, because that's something I don't really see in anime. A strangulation, because I've seen characters where, where they basically get attacked either by beating them up with basically their fists or kicking them, shooting them, stabbing them, falling out buildings, but never a strangulation. That is something new. I've never actually seen it before. And then I've seen that in like actual movies. 
Uh huh. But not in anime. Oh. And then he wakes up in, and they actually do show. I, I do phrase the anime for this. There's actually a little, like he doesn't notice this. There's a little mark on it on his right side. It basically, if you look in front, basically it's on the left side of his neck, and there's basically finger marks on his neck. And then he changes clothes, basically he's ordered to, but in his nice suit. Of course, his adorable little sister tries to come, but she's not really allowed to, not for like a little while. And of course, before he goes in the ceremony, he runs meets Sharon, who he comments as being cute, and he's very attracted to her, and she's only two years younger than he is. Mm -hmm. Let me briefly, of course, he does remember her. He he basically remembers her when he gets out of basically we get into it. Talk with the man. He goes in the ceremony, everything goes perfectly fine, kneels down, uncle takes out a big humongous sword, taps on his shoulder, like, uh, basically from a disease or whatever, at least come of age, and then he goes up there, basically, up, 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 basically there's two set of stairs, like one goes to like a second floor of this chapel, and I've never seen a chapel like this in real life, I've, yeah, never seen one like this. We have these steps basically inside, and they go to like this small, like little back, uh, kind of like balcony floor. That's where Oz is, and then there's another set of steps right behind that that leads to another part of the floor which has a clock on it. Yeah, it goes up there, and the clock strikes midnight, and then time stops for some reason. Yeah, I can tell basically by looking at Oz is moving, everyone's frozen. Basically, time has stopped. And then, and of course, the new shows prior to this specific ceremony, where Gilbert is actually confronted by a woman in a red cloak. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't say who this person is. They probably don't. I think that they make many these people are later, but I haven't got that part in the anime. I've read, I've read a good chunk of the manga. But actually, like, if you wonder like where I'm up to the manga right now, how far I've read, I'm pretty much up to the second Lagos arc, the second. The sec, the second the most current arc of the second to last arc of the manga, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. And you're probably thinking, why would you jump? Why would you jump in the anime when you're on that point? Because I had the books with me. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, and these three three figures show up. And they, said, they mentioned about Oz's sin. Of course, this is, he meant they mentioned that after Oz slices uh, Gilbert. Doesn't kill him per se. I mean, normally something like that would probably kill somebody, but the way he sliced it, yeah, he's definitely living from that. Basically, it's probably with a wound, not kind of conscious from blood loss. And he's held down. He's about to receive his sin, and then Alice shows up, and then she starts groping him. Well, not in his prior part, basically around his head, around his arms. Of course, when he meets over there, calls somebody else. I'll talk about a minute. Yes, I'm with the black rabbit form. It's like I've claimed this guy. I claimed him for myself. He's my quarry. They fight him, and then he gets sent to the abyss. Yeah, they mention the abyss. So this is terrible place. Now the series starts off with sort of a show off this tragedy. This whole city gets sucked third dimension. Mhm. Mm yep. After when the world takes place, they don't actually don't explain it until later on in the series. Mhm. Mm Let's see. Huh, what else? He's taken to the abyss. He's only the abyss for about one episode. Yeah, he's actually taken there about actually about halfway through episode two. Because basically he's in the real world for the entire episode one. And then he's sent to the abyss about halfway through episode two. And spends the rest of the episode in there and then gets out of it by the end of episode three. So he goes there and it's just very, it's not exactly, this looks like a terrible place that he described it. Yeah, they described it as the abyss as this terrible looking prison. And they get there, it's this odd place with some toys, which are actually these creatures called chains. Now when I think of chains, I think of metal chains. I've actually lifted chains. You know, chains you basically hook up the vehicles or at least tie stuff up with. Those are basically chains. Chains are also used to hold fences, but... That's what they call these creatures, chains, which is something interesting. I've never heard of it where in fiction where they have a creature of an after physical after a physical item. And of course, yes, there are in fact actual chains shown in the series. Blackout basically Alice is shown for using them. Mm -hmm. And you see two of these chains. One is like the small one, 
and then it's destroyed by Alice as a little while after Ross is showing up. And Alice, like, like of course, Alice remembers, like, oh, mixed sexual harasser. And then he basically, she basically kicks him. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they do explain later on exactly how she would get out of there briefly, but get back in. And, of course, she wants to a contract with them so she can get out of there. And they're stopped, briefly taken away by supposedly Sharon. But nope, it's not Sharon because she reveals her name, that she knows the name of Alice, which even he points out though Sharon should not know her name. Like, he probably knows her as B. Rabbit, but not as Alice. And it turns out this particular uh, this particular woman is not Sharon at all, but another chain, a really big one. It's basically a head with spider legs. And eventually Alice shows up and then... Get sort of, it saves Oz again, and then she sort of gets eaten. Of course, Oz basically gets her out. This I'll form a, cha- a contract with you, and then basically, it's, and she says the correct phrase: "Please form a contract with me." And then she makes out with him. Yep, she makes out with him, and they have to get out of there pretty easily. And uh, back in the chapel, and it looks like some time has passed by because the chapel looks like it's in ruins. And then Sharon's like, "Oh, I'm gonna take you back to my house," and of course, well. I think she he wakes up basically under, like, Raven. Yeah, that's that's what they call him, so Raven. And pretty much they, ex- yeah, explained, like, he gets out. And of course he explains what happened in the previous episode, like how he got out and like what what basically briefly summer would happen there. And of course, well, break is basically eating his food. So we'll, we'll take you back to our headquarters, and eventually Oz is sort of tied up, though he takes like a knife. Though it's revealed actually this is Alice possessing it because she has the ability to do that. And and basically, able to get, like take briefly take Sharon hostage, and then of course breaks like <laughs> taps on. Of course the. He knocks the knife out of their hand. Basically, it's a butter knife. She her hostages. A butter knife. Not a dagger. A butter knife. Yep. And then he just knocks Oz, and then Alice pops out. Like, oh, a human form version of a chain. Interesting. And, of course, they explain that Oz has an illegal contract, because it's illegal to have contracts with chains. Okay? And, of course, she explains the reason why she made contact her, so she can regain her memories. Okay, Interesting. And of course, that this is of course after well, break starts basically beating her. Yes, beating her, and Oz basically breaks out of his confinement and protects Alice. And of course, that's when Alice explains she wants to recover her memories. And then the pocket watch opens up. We see another chain pop up. Yeah, the third one seen. This one is actually a hedgehog. Yes, a giant hedgehog. Which almost looks like it has his eyes sewn shut, but basically just big eyelashes, and it rolls around like a like 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 it's Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's a big one with like roll all over the place. It's like don't get like outside, and of course, and it was revealed that Raven's been holding back Alice's power. So the chance comes into the Bee Rabbit, takes the up and defeats it, and of course they can create the cooperate with them, and then of course. <laughs> She's sitting in a comfy chair, and Oz is sitting on the armrest. It's like, of course, they explain the whole thing of, base, of becoming allies. And then the episode ends saying that we're going to investigate the Baskervilles. Figure out what, what their basically reason why they're doing this. I'm thinking Baskervilles. Even, of course, they explain the whole thing about Pandora. Yeah, Pandora is the organization they work for. They investigate chains and the abyss. That's pretty much their purpose. <sighs> Let's see what else. Yeah, and then of course Alice agrees to work with them. Of course, the offensive back. Oh, I heard the name Baskins. I'm like, did they make reference to Sherlock Holmes? Yes, apparently they did. Because well, there was a Baskerville in that one, though it involved a freaking dog in that one, like a demon dog. This one is simply put like a uh, like some people called Baskerville so we investigate them, and that's where the episode ends. Yep. Start of a new side of the next arc of the series. Take up the next six episodes. Yeah, the name of this arc, which is the first arc of the series, and it covers the first four episodes of the anime, and of course the first four chapters of manga, which is called Coming of Age Ceremony. That's what the name of this arc is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one chapter per episode. Not bad per se. Though they do increase the number of chapters within the very next with the episode five. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I should also point out though, by the time of the final arc of the series, they pretty much abandon the manga and go straight to like filler for like the last few episodes of the series. I will talk about the last few episodes when I get up to them. But yeah, good start for the series, okay? So yeah, that's it for this particular review. My next review I'm going to do right next will be my comic corner. And two trades featuring Wolverine. You'll find what they are next, okay? But do the next review. Bye.